And welcome back. We're in session two of the Envirothon Soils study session uh, hosted by the Lancaster County Conservation District. Again, I'm John Chaburka. I'm a soil scientist with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. And with me is Sally Gregory with the Lancaster County Conservation District. And we are going to go into the session uh, two, which is uh, the, the second part of the Envirothon test and the soils part of the Envirothon test has always been testing the proficiency of the student navigating through a county soil survey report. The, the traditional soil survey reports were quite bulky and they listed, showed all the maps for the entire county. They also had uh, narrative manuscript descriptions and tabular reports in the front page of the book. And finding an area on a map and then going and getting information from the manuscript and or the tables was the test of the proficiency of that book. Now moving on into the 21st century, we have the Web Soil Survey. And let me put in a little plug here for the Web Soil Survey. Uh, we will provide these. And by the way, Sally is going to be uh, uh, publishing this, this um, series on a website. And along with that will be attachments. And we would ask that you open and print those attachments to follow along with the discussions. And one of those attachments will be this trifold brochure on the Web Soil Survey. This is a free publication and it's also a free website that you can go to and through a three-step process of uh, um, identifying your area of interest, making a soil map and associated tables, and then checking them out from your shopping cart, you can produce yourself a web soil survey report as easy as we did this morning. Uh, they usually come in about a 20 page report complete with maps, tables, and guidelines. We're going to be using a mock-up of a web soil survey report of a farm here in Lancaster County. And the attachment that you'll find on the website will be entitled the Lancaster County, Pennsylvania Envirothon Farm. Please open that PDF up and, and uh, um, uh, print it out and you can follow along with us as we do. So we're going to put the old soil survey report away and I'm gonna ask Sally to follow along with us here as well to show the Lancaster County Soil Survey Report. This report is auto-generated. It, it produces a beautiful color uh, 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 cover page to the book. It goes through the, a preface of how the soil survey was made, the uses and misuses of the soil survey information, a table of contents, and, and a discussion of how the soil survey was made, how soil scientists went across the landscapes and digging holes and identifying soils on those landscapes making a legend and making those soils map. It was a very thorough, complicated process. Uh, Lancaster County, the uh, original soil survey was completed back in the 1950s. It was updated in the 1970s and now it's, it's available free for use on the web soil survey. So without any further ado, we're gonna ask you to go, turn to page eight. And page eight is the soils map. And the soils map is showing a mock-up farm somewhere here in Lancaster County. And you'll notice that the blue line area identifies the area of interest. I used a tool on the website to cut that farm out of the county. And then it generated an area of interest. And it's just a simple click of a button to create the soils map. Once the soils map is created, you will see those soil polygons in orange lines with orange symbols, alphabetic symbols within those orange lines. So those are called soil map units and soil map unit symbols. I'm trying to explain to you how to interpret these soils maps. On page eight and nine of the book, you will see that it also comes with a legend. There are uh, uh, the page nine is a special symbols legend and page 10 is the actual soils legend for the map unit legend for this map. So for example, the BDB unit on this map is a Beddington silt loam, three to 8% slopes. Uh, we uh, cut out an area of about 106 acres on this farm and almost 10 acres of that was located in the BDB mapping unit. So if we look back at that map, you could also see some other landscape and ge geographical characteristics that help you interpret the map. You'll notice that the roads are shown on the maps and their names. You can see that at the background is a recent um, um, aerial photography. Uh, you can see roads and streets and buildings and barns and fields and streams and woodlands. Uh, they're all very unique. 
Another unique feature here that we would see is uh, running um, through our farm on the southeastern part of the map is a power line. And you can actually see the lines very, very faintly on there, but also the power towers, the electrical towers that run through the farm. It's very uh, 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 enjoyable sometimes to interpret these aerial photographs. So you can see that there are different soil types that lay on different landscapes on this farm. Uh, we're going to now go through a mock example of, of, of example questions that you would receive on a soil survey, uh, an Envirothon soils exam, and we're going to use this farm as our example. So maybe a, uh, the first example would be uh, to test your proficiency of finding a spot on a map. So a question would be something similar to at the, uh, the confluence of the two streams on the map where Furnace Run meets the stream to the north, what is the soil type located in that area? And if you look down at the southern central portion of our map, we will see where Furnace Run, the blue line, meets the other stream running from the north down, it's in the LN mapping unit. You've just, you would fill in LN uh, as a, uh, it's, they're all multiple choice questions. You would choose LN for the answer. The second question would be, okay, within the LN mapping unit, what does LN stand for? So that would require the student to flip over to two pages to page 10. To the soil map unit legend, they would see page 10, find LN in the table, and the answer would be linside silt loam. Linside is the series that is described there those with those unique five soil forming factors, and silt loam is the texture of the surface of that soil. We list the textures of the surface because our main job in the past 75 years is to help farmers stop eroding soils. If we know what the surface textures are of the soils, it helps us greatly with reducing soil erosion. So that would be an example of the second question. A third example of a, 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 of a question would be, of the Linside series, if a farmer wanted to build a building on that location, what is the suitability of Linside to, uh, um, to house a dwelling with a basement? If we flip through the report, a few pages up to page, starting on page 26, here's these reports that were generated. And the first one was under the building site development tab was dwellings with basements. The following page shows, a, uh, the following two pages on page 28 shows a color-coded map of that interpretation. And if you notice on the next page, the legend to that, the areas in red show a severe limitation for, for building a house with a basement. Um, a green area shows slight or no limitations to having a house with a basement. Areas in yellow would have a slight limitation to having a building with a basement. But if we go further onto the table on page 30, at the bottom of the table, we will find Linside on our table for dwellings with basements. And on the third column, it shows that the rating is very limited. That would be your answer. So again, these questions are geared towards proving the proficiency of how a student can go and find information on a soils map, identify which soil type it is, and then go further into a soil report to find out if in fact there's a limitation or a suitability for that soil for performing a certain task in a certain landscape. That's example one. Let's try that again with another area on the soils map with another land use question. So if we go back to page eight and we look at our soils map, a question would be posed something similar to this. When looking at the farm at the southeastern part of the soils map on page eight, you will notice an electric power line tower centered in the middle of a field to the east of the farmstead. What is that soil type? So again, it's, gonna, uh, it's going to require that the student find the southeastern part of the map, 
identify the, the, soil, or the, the power line tower on the map by interpreting the aerial photograph and then noticing that it is located within an HAA mapping unit. That's the answer to question one. Question two would be, what does HAA mean? That's where they would go again to page 10, find HAA, and learn that it is Hagerstown, Silt Loam, 0-3% to slopes. If we break down that map unit name, again, the first part is the soil series. It's the Hagerstown series, which has five unique soil forming factors. It also shows the surface texture, again, being also a silt loam. And lastly, it shows that the average slope range for the HAA mapping unit is 3 to 8% slopes. A subsequent question would be then, uh, given Hagerstown mapping unit, given the Hagerstown soils, what is the suitability or limitation for using that, that field for applying municipal waste sludge on that farm? In this report is uh, a table on page 36 called Land Application of Municip Municipal Sewage Sludge on page 36. In the first column, we scroll down and we find our map unit, HAA. Then we go across into column three, which is the rating, and the rating shows that it's somewhat limited. The map that came along with that report shows the same thing. We find our power line tower. Here's our HAA mapping unit, and we notice that that map unit is color-coded yellow for being somewhat limited. A subsequent follow-up question to that would be, what is the reason why the HAA is somewhat limited? You would then refer to the fifth column into the chart and it would show that the Hagerstown soils are too acid generally to uh, have surface municipal wastewater sludge applied to them. Now notice that these limitations are all overcomable. You can do something to be able to use that land use. So uh, uh, an, an easy application of lime to that field would allow uh, that farmer to spread sewage sludge on his field. So again, there's a second example of identifying a soil type from a soils map, identifying the name of that soil, and then identifying soil properties and qualities or limitations or suitabilities for that soil for particular land uses. That would be the test for uh, identifying your proficiency for navigating through the web soil survey. Thank you.